Out of the darkness, into nowhere, the night hawk rides! Hidden among the towering peaks of the Cascade Mountains lies a little valley. Around it are mines, some fabulously rich, some forlorn and deserted, pathetic markers of the end of some forgotten prospector's dream. In the valley, and among the rolling brown foothills, is cattle country. In the richest section of Forgotten Valley, as it was named long ago, is the Circle E Ranch, once one of the richest in all the valley, but now fallen on hard times. Fred Evans, owner of the Circle E, was also owner of the Ruby Mine, once a famous silver mine, now desolate and deserted. For the silver load has run out, and Fred Evans lies helpless and paralyzed in the old ranch house. His only child, Dorothy, is carrying on as best she can. And beyond Forgotten Valley, in the mountains, rides the mysterious and terrible Nighthawk. It is night. In the lonely foothills on the edge of the Circle E, a lone horseman is riding. <laughs> Who's there? Who is it? Are you Pete Steele, foreman of the Circle E? Yep, that's me. Who are you and what do you want? Just wanted to talk to you for a minute, that's all. Well, I I don't usually stop to talk with strangers at 11 o'clock at night on a lonely road. I'd much rather you stop and talk in a perfectly friendly fashion like this than for me to have to make you stay. Make me stay? Why, Don't say... move, Steele. Please. You're covered. Oh. I'd hate to have an accident happen. Oh, I... I see. Well, it looks like I stayed on it. Now, that's much better. All right, now. What do you want? I want to talk about the affairs of Circle E. You see, I'm a friend of Miss Dorothy's. It's a sort of a funny way to show it, ain't it? Holding up a phone. All for a very good purpose, I assure you. Well, I might as well warn you that I don't make it a practice of talking about Miss Dorothy's affairs. I'm glad to know that. It shows that you're the kind of a man who ought to be working for her. Ought to be? Why... I've been there ever since Miss Dorothy was learning to walk. That's nigh on to uh, 23 years. 22 years and five months, to be exact. Hey, seems like you know as much about Circle E as I do. Perhaps I do. Miss Dorothy is having a pretty hard time keeping things going, isn't she? Well, some people might. Oh, that's it. And Sam Blackman has a mortgage on the holdings back of the old mine. Yeah, I guess that's pretty common knowledge. He's threatening to foreclose it. Isn't that right? Say, what do you need to ask me questions for? You know as much about it as I do. I just wanted to verify what I knew, that's all. You might take a message to Miss Dorothy for me, though. Yeah, what uh, kind of a message? Tell her that uh, even if the land doesn't seem valuable to her now, to hang on to it at all costs. That's all. Hey, wait a minute. Who are you and what's your name? I can't tell you my name, but some people call me the Nighthawk. Come on, Cyclone. The Nighthawk? Lordy gee. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. <laughs> And next morning, back at Circle E, Dorothy's school chum, Shirley, questions Pete, the foreman. Morning, Pete. Is Dorothy back from town yet? Not yet, Miss Shirley, but she ought to be back any time now. Well, I do hope everything goes all right. You mean, at the bank? Yes, of course. Well, so do I. Oh, oh, look, there's Dorothy. Where? Over there. Where? <laughs> oh, how that girl can ride. Well, she ought to. I taught her myself I did when she weren't hardly big enough to talk plain. I do hope she's had good luck, Pete. There must be some way. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Miss Dorothy will find the lost mine sometime. The lost mine? Yep. What's that? Well, ain't you ever heard about it? No, Dorothy never mentioned it. I guess I spoke out of turn then, because if she'd wanted you to hear about the lost mine, she'd have told you herself. Oh, do tell me, Pete. You've got me all curious. No, 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 no. I guess you'll have to ask Miss Dorothy. Well, I certainly will. It sounds exciting. Hi, Dorothy. What luck? No luck. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm not surprised. I expected it. I'll, uh, I'll take your horse around, Miss Dorothy. Thanks. Oh, Pete, just a minute. Yes. I don't want anyone to say anything about this bank loan around Dad. Well, you don't think I'd let anyone tell them, do you? 
Pete again. He was almost my nursemaid. The story was telling me this morning. But oh, what happened? Oh, nothing worth telling. Didn't get the loan, that's all. Oh, Dorothy. What are you going to do? I don't know yet. Dorothy, what is the lost mine? The lost mine? Oh, yes. Well, there isn't much to tell about it. Personally, I don't think there is such a thing as a lost mine. But come up on the porch. Now, I'll tell you all about it. Well, real or not, it sounds fascinating. Oh, no, look at the hammock, darling. You've had a long, towering ride, and you need the rest. Well, I never get tired. Mm -hmm. Well, now, you tell me the whole story. Well, it began just a few years ago. One morning, soon after I arrived home from school, Dad called me into his office right after breakfast. Come here, Dorothy. I got some bad news for you. Bad news? Oh, what is it, Dad? Well, we're poor, daughter. Poor? But how can we be? The ruby mine. Well, the rubies run out. No mines do that sometimes. Oh. Oh, but we still have the ranch, Dad. Yes, that's right. We still have the ranch. But no more of them trip east. And no more expensive clothes and things like that. Oh, I don't mind that. We can be just as happy as anybody in the wide world without any of those things. Well, bless you, child. You sure got courage, just like your mother had. Yes, we'll get along all right. And besides... Uh, besides what? I don't know whether I ought to tell you or not. Just in case you might be disappointed if it didn't turn out well. Oh, of course you ought to tell me. Aren't we partners? Yes, that's right. Well, here it goes. There's always been a story that up in the hills behind the ruby mine was another mine, richer than the ruby ever was. It's on our land, but while people have hunted for it for years, it's never been located. Well, I think we've found it. It was Dad's best friend, Michael Rogan, who thought he'd found the lost mine. And one day, the two of them rode up into the hills to explore. And they never came back. And it wasn't until two, noon next day that Pete came into the room where I was waiting. What is it, Pete? Have they found him? Yes, Miss Dorothy. We found him, but... Pete, is he dead? No, no, he ain't dead. Oh, where is he? I want to see him. Well, now take it easy, Miss Dorothy. The boys are bringing him up to the house. I, I rode on ahead to tell you. He's hurt then? Yeah. How badly? Well, I, I can't tell you now. One of the boys is riding to town for a doctor, but he ain't conscious and seems to me like he's hurt his back some way. Oh. Now, don't you worry, Miss Dorothy. He'll be all right. Oh, but what happened? And where did they find him? Up in the rocks beyond the old ruby mine, you know. Up beyond the coulee. Looked like he'd been riding along the rim rock and thrown off his horse over the edge. Because up on the rim rock, we found Mike Rogan and he was dead. Dead? dead. Oh, but what killed him? A bullet, Miss Dorothy. A bullet? Yes. Then he was murdered. Oh, but yeah, Dad... Dad's horse was shot, too. Well, that's how it happened. And you've never found out what happened? No. And you've never found out any more about the lost mine? Nothing at all. There was another funny thing, though. Michael Rogan had a son a little older than I am. We used to play together when we were kids. He went away to school before I did. He never came back. Never came back? No, he was away when it happened, and he simply disappeared. No one knows what happened to him. Mm, that's queer. Well, you know, I thought that perhaps Dad and his partner had found something. Rogan had let his son know about it, and the murderer did away with him, too. Oh, how terrible. It seems hard to imagine such things happening in such a peaceful place, Forgotten Valley. Forgotten Valley has never been a peaceful place since the first silver was found here. Oh, you're going to have a visitor. Oh, so I am. I wonder who it is. Oh, that's Pete from here. Maybe it's the Nighthawk. Come to pay a social call. You're too romantic, Shirley. Oh, but such a romantic bandit, Dorothy. <laughs> romantic fiddlesticks. Besides, I can see who it is now. It's Sam Blackman. Oh, that man. Oh. Well, I'm going in the house. And besides, you'll want to talk business with him. You can call me when he's gone. Oh. Morning, Miss Evans. It's a beautiful day, ain't it? Yes, very. Uh, won't you come up and sit down? Why, thanks. I will. Well, we might as well get down to business, I suppose, Mr. Blackman. I haven't the money. Well, don't make any difference. The thing isn't worth much anyhow. 
But your father was my dearest friend, and naturally his daughter's interests are my own. And yes, uh, go on. Of course, I could simply foreclose the mortgage, but I don't want to do that. I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, now, you just transfer the land to me, and the foreclosing of the mortgage is a mere formality. And I'm going to pay you five hundred dollars to boot. Five hundred dollars? Of course, you understand that I don't need to pay you a cent. But as I said, your father... Yes, with your dearest friend. But you know the land is worth much more than that. My dear Miss Evans, that stretch of country isn't worth the dynamite to blow it up. Well, why are you so anxious to get hold of it? Simply to help you out, that's all. Well, if you're so anxious to help me, why don't you simply carry the mortgage until I can pay it off? Why, it'd only be a burden to you. This way, you'll have it off your mind and have the $500 besides. But suppose I don't want to give it up. Well, that's pure foolishness. Now, what possible... Hey, Dorothy. Oh, oh, good morning, Blackman. Good morning. Good morning. What is it, Pete? Well, I got a note for you, Miss Dorothy. A note? Yes. Well, where'd it come from? Well, I don't know. One of the boys brought it to me. He said a kid brought it to him, someone he'd never seen before. You'll pardon me, Mr. Blackman. Certainly. Where? Anything wrong, Miss Dorothy? No. No, nothing. It's nothing important. Uh, thank you for bringing it up. <laughs> well, now, uh, let's get back to business. Uh, Mr. Blackman, can you give me just a little time to think about this? Well, naturally, I can't refuse the daughter of an old friend a week then, eh? Yes, thank you so much. Well, I must be going. Of course, you know that I don't have to do this, but I will. Then I'll see you in a week. All right, in a week. Good morning. Good morning. Shirley. Yeah? Did you hear? Yes, the oily old skunk. Oh, but listen to this mess. What? It says, have no fear of Blackman. He's only a test car. But do not give up your title to the land. Ask for time. Remember, I am your friend. And it's time the night hawk. The night hawk. <laughs> The note read, I am your friend, and was signed by the Nighthawk. But is he Dorothy Evans' friend, or is he trying to get the mining property for himself? Will Blackman foreclose on the mortgage? Is there a lost mine? Be sure to listen to the next thrilling episode of the Nighthawk Rise.